Hello world and welcome back. I just got a quick little tutorial for you today. I noticed some people did purchase the book that I use made by Elliot Williams and published by Make Magazine, I think. The Make Company. It's really good. It teaches you a lot of things that go on behind the scenes and help you to understand how to program hardware even though if you don't use the Atmega 328P chip per se, you're still going to understand how most of the Atmega line works, uh, which was now owned by Microchip. And you're also going to understand how other chips function and how to turn things on and off. So I always highly recommend his book, even if you're not into programming the Atmega chips per se. Maybe you're doing a different kind of thing. He just provides a really, really good behind the scenes, detailed, not so boring. It's actually pretty fun. Pretty fun approach to the whole thing because it is very boring. It is very difficult. So I highly recommend his book. The one thing I noticed is he has a very short section on the make file. And the make file, what it does is it's a bunch of configurations that help to program your chip. So when you actually click, you know, program or, uh, which I, by the way, I, a lot of people don't use programmers notepad. They say, do you use notepad plus plus or something like that. I don't like notepad plus plus plus. I don't think it, I mean, it looks better. Yeah. I mean, this looks kind of gaudy. This is just my style though. You can change it to something simpler. I don't like notepad plus plus. I feel like it has less functionality, it has less options. Um, I think it's great for, for other things, but for what I'm doing here, AVR and C with make files and whatnot, it just doesn't work. So I don't like it, whatever. This one, I didn't know you could actually click make clean, make all, and then make program. You could even program it if you have it hooked up to your chip right here. It's all right here. You don't have to open it. <laughs> you don't have to open AVR Dude SS or whatever. It, it's all right here. So I think that's great. So I'm going to continue using it anyway. So the make file, I was having trouble getting my make file to work. It couldn't find the header files that I needed. So the header file that I'm using is a serial communication header file, which was provided by Elliot Williams in that book. I don't know who the original author is. It may be him, but um, it works really well for everything that I've tried to use it for and all the examples in his book, it works. And so I included it this way, just like he said, it's, it has these um, uh, quotation marks on it. And then I have my, you can see the overall code of what I'm trying to make. That I'm gonna show you all how to make. And so I have my, my main, my loop, I close it out, it's great, it's wonderful. Um, and then I have my make file in the folder. Um, wait, here. Actually, let me, let me clean that out. Okay. All right, so you'll see I have my decibel meter folder for this project, and then I have decibel meter.c. Actually, you know what? I noticed. Anyway. So you'll notice that I have decibel meter is the name of the, f the project folder that I created, this directory. And this is the actual C file, which is what you see here. There it is. See? Right here. Get it? C, C. And uh, here's the make file. So I just copied and pasted this and you always got to make sure that it's up to, to date and it's pointing to that C file. And this is the make file that's also provided uh, by the author of that book. And so I have my microcontroller set to the correct chip. I have the CPU speed set to eight megahertz, uh, which was what the fuses are set to. Remember, if you buy the chips from Microchip directly, they're going to be clocked at one megahertz and you just have to set the fuses appropriately. You can do it in the make file or you could do it, I believe, uh, you can do it in AVR Dudes right here. Uh, right here, this is where you do it. And you can look up what fuses to set. There's, there's a website that you can do it. So anyway, so here's your library directory. So this helps your... This helps the compiler to string a line between your actual C program and the header file that you're trying to access. So it's, what you have to do is you have to 
point it in the right direction. So by default, Elliot had, th this means two directories above, think of these as doors. This is two open doors and then you're like walking and then you open another door and you're walking. This is two directories above this folder. So if we go into this folder, you'll see it's in libraries and it's right here. This is where I put it and it was having trouble trying to find it. So you'll notice if I try to compile this program and I have it set to that path, it throws an error and I'll show you why. See, it has an error. It cannot find that file, that directory, that file. It does not exist. The reason is, first of all, this is for Macs. A Windows computer will have backslashes instead of forward slashes. So that's the way the doors open. <laughs> they open the other way on the Windows computer. You can just think of it like that. And this is actually an incomplete way of, because I moved the, the folder around, I have to change the address. So this, in order for the, the compiler to string this file, I have to help it to find this file. This is the file that I'm, I'm trying to include. And this file is attached to this file. So you can go and you can see, yikes, right? <laughs> That's also my color scheme, it's pretty bad, but you can see that this header file is pointing, it's, it, it, it's just a template of functions that actually are more fleshed out in here. And you can see how complicated it is and I'm very grateful that and thankful that somebody else did this for me. So don't try to reinvent the wheel if somebody else has already done it. So this is incomplete. So what I did was I compared, I compared uh, where my actual folder was for that program file. So I, I went in like this. And this is gonna work if you're using a different chip or you know something else. If you're not even doing hardware programming and you're having make file troubles, I, you're, you can figure it out. I figured it out last night. And if I can do it, you can do it. So here's my actual folder here. So if I copy this and I put it into notepad here. All right, so this is the actual folder. So where's the common thread? It's up to here, right? You see that? So anything up to there, they're sharing the AVR folder together. So what I need to do is I need to point to this. That's all I gotta do. So I control C, copy that, and I'll plop it right in here, right? It's not gonna be able to find it still. Can you guess why? So if I clean that out, make it. See, it still throws the error. The reason is because I need to tell it to go so the door is open, but it doesn't go out of the door. You have to tell it to go out of the door. That's what the, those two ellipses are, those, those dots. Save it, make clean, make all. Boom, done. It found it. That means it found this header file because what I did was, and now you can see all the, the, the files that it uh, created uh, for the tool chain. So, Basically, I told it to go all the way into here. And the easy way to do it is to go to where your head file is and then just copy that address. And like I showed you, compare the two addresses and find the commonalities and just tell it to go one step out of the folder that, you know, that it starts going down into like this, boom, boom, boom. And it should work. So I hope that helps anybody out who's having make file troubles it's really confusing. Also, remember, if you're on a Mac, the slashes are going to be forward slashes, I believe, instead of backslashes. It's confusing. Just think of it as a door and, you know, some doors open one way, some doors open the other way. Stay grounded. Stay grounded.